Hello and welcome back to Bookish Theories. In today's video, we'd like to talk about seven things of my life, focusing on a little breakdown and analysis of the lyrics and the music video to see what they can tell us about the concept and story told in DMV. Of My Life is a song co-written and co-composed by Yuji himself that expresses their desire to fight for their life despite the hardships coming their way. As explained in the video, the meaningful message behind the song was inspired by everyone around the world, and this is because the song describes a very specific sentiment that most if not all people have felt at least once throughout their life. In the song 17 talk about those moments you're so frustrated by how your life is going that you legitimately feel like the dumbest person alive. You might have lost your way, you might have lost your goals, and even if you try to laugh about it, you'd rather cry instead. The ever-growing disappointment numbs your feeling to the point that you'd like to give up and disappear. This effing world makes you feel like it's pointless to dream alone, and even if your heart is too dark to be like the cartoon heroes we used to watch, you cannot but wish for somebody to come along and trade their heart for yours. In the song, 17 express their frustration in a way that I'm sure resonates with a lot of people. If this song makes you feel seen, it's because it's inspired by all of us, and this sense of universality is a major theme in the concept as a whole. In those moments when we feel like the dumbest person alive, we might feel alone in our stupidity, but also alienated by our failures. We might perceive ourselves as pathetic, inadequate, dumb, while the rest of the world is not, but this is not true at all. And the song is meant to prove it. We all feel stupid from time to time, and even if this effing world makes us numb to the pain, this doesn't mean that we should commit to the bit. In the song, 17 portray their own feelings to encourage you to deal with yours, so instead of succumbing to the sadness, they express their wish to find themselves. Instead of wasting their life, they decide to fight for it, and instead of crying over losing their way, they decide to find it once again. At the lowest point, they might feel like shrinking away, but they pick themselves up, because they don't want to be an embarrassment tomorrow for the person they knew yesterday. This means that even if today we might feel stupid, sad, numb or lost, we should work to improve our situation so that our younger self can be proud of the person we will become. This process, however, has to start today, in the present. If you feel like the dumbest person alive, the smartest thing that you can do is to fight for your life. You have to fight for your own good, because that is the first step towards finding yourself. Now in the video, this message is expressed with a cinematic story inspired by the Truman Show. Show, which is a movie where a man discovered that his entire life is a TV show where everything is fake except for him. Upon discovering that his life is a lie, Truman has to choose between staying in a fake reality where he would have nothing to fear or venture out in the real world that might be scary but is also true. Full of references to the movie, the video portrays the story of a group of people who decide to escape their perfect fake world in order to go on a journey towards real and perfect happiness. Back in the teaser, the narration introduced this concept by saying that in this fucking world, you are not allowed to be happy even if you deserve it. Because of that, we should fight for our right to happiness, and therefore fight for our life. We should be like an explorer, be spontaneous, and break free from our perfectly unhappy world. In Half My Life, this journey begins when the members already made this decision, so the focus of the video is on them escaping a reality they already know is fake. Each of them is dealing with this situation in different ways, and each of them somewhat references what happens in the Truman Show, so let's break this down one by one to really understand what's going on. Now, the first one that appears on screen is Escoops. We see him on top of a building surrounded by other buildings, and as he turns around, there is a blackout hitting the whole town. If we focus on Escoops throughout the entire video, however, we not only discover that he's the one who caused it, but also that this blackout actually affects reality as a whole. As he pushes the lever, the whole set starts to malfunction, and these little glitches break the illusion that this perfect world is real. A great example of this can actually be found in Dino's scene, who misses stargazing a perfect sky that turns out to be completely fake. The stars begin to blink, the constellations start glitching, and this revelation eventually convinces him to live for good. In the movie, Truman understands the reality of his situation little by little, so in a sense, each member represents a different stage. In Mingyu's scene, for instance, we see that he's trying to live by car, but this escape is cut short by a stage light that has fallen from the sky right onto the hood. This is a direct reference to the movie, because the first incident showing that something is off is a stage light 
of falling from the sky by mistake. Before that moment, Truman has no idea of what is happening, and in the MV, Hoshi kind of represents the Truman we meet since the very beginning. The audience spies on him through a camera hidden in the mirror, and like Hoshi in the video, Truman is a bit unsatisfied by his life. He would like to be an explorer, go to Fiji, but he's terrified of the ocean because of a trauma that the producer gave him as a child. In the video, this concept is very much implied by the bedroom setting, because if on the one hand the room is full of nautical imagery to show his desire to leave, on the other, the poster of the storm implies that he's conflicted because he's scared. Now, the theme of fear is very important here, because in both the lyrics and the video, the implication is that to fight for your life, you must overcome the fear keeping you miserable. What's even more interesting, however, is that both the movie and Seventeen kinda imply that this fear is also fed by the environment you live in. In the Truman Show, his fear is manufactured to keep him on the controlled setting of the show, and in the same way, Seventeen's world is built as if to keep them scared of venturing outside. In June scene, for instance, we see him running out of the set while the extras run after him. Once he escapes in the desert, we see the billboards promoting messages that are meant to scare them into obedience. The fake reality wants them to stay, so they try to convince them that nothing will ever make them happy, that they should avoid challenges and stay safe, that they should never make a mistake, because if they do, waves of fear will be coming for them. A similar subliminal message can also be found in one who's seen, because on the bus, the poster warns the travelers about the bad weather. In the movie, Truman sees a similar poster at the traveling gate agency, but like Truman, Wano decides to board the bus anyway. He decides to overcome fear and fight for his life, and this is when the extras have to intervene. Since the poster didn't work, the paid actors have to fill the bus as much as possible, so even if Wano is trying to leave, he's eventually forced to exit the vehicle. If this wasn't enough, as soon as the bus leaves, rain starts falling in the very direction Wano wanted to go, and this is a direct reference to a very famous scene of the movie. The environment is trying to make them stay, but the more it does, the more they want to leave. In the video, we see the characters like the Eight, for instance, are sending messages to counteract the ones promoted in the fake reality. This fucking world wants them to stay scared, but the Eight wants them to fight, and this is the message that eventually succeeds. In Wuji's scene, for instance, we see that like Oshi cannot let go of the idea of leaving. Like Truman secretly dreams of going to Fiji, Uji is hiding a ticket to a tropical location where happiness finds you. That's his ticket to happiness, and like the others, he's ready to fight for it, even if the world around him is trying to make him stay. In a scene that very much parallels the Truman show, Uji is trying to leave by car as the actors try to stop him. In a similar way, Sung is playing his escape at work, but since he's going off script, he soon runs into parts of the set that weren't ready for him to see. A very cool scene of the movie is when Truman starts to suspect that something is off and decides to change his routine for the first time ever. Since he decides to take an elevator that he never used before, he walks into a backstage area where the actors are resting out of character. In the same way, Sung Wan notices that he's being watched and decides to run off, but he eventually ends up in a backstage area where all the extras are chilling on a break. Like in the Truman Show, the moment the members start noticing that something is off, there is no going back. It snowballs from there, and this is exactly what we see with DK and Vernon. In DK's scene, for instance, he's trashing his place and seemingly try to find the cameras that are spying on him. When he eventually lays on the couch and starts playing with the ball, the ball accidentally hits a lamp revealing a camera hidden inside. This prompts him to open the curtains, where four drones are recording his every move from the outside. Even if they fly off as soon as he sees them, it's already too late at this point, because the illusion of that perfect world is eventually destroyed. In Vernon's scene, we see that as soon as the truth is revealed, the actors go on a literal manhunt to find them, but the members will not stop until they succeed. Fighting for their life might be very difficult, but it's also the only choice that can lead them to the truth. In Joshua's scene, for instance, he finds a pin saying, fight for your life. Now, this is actually a very important detail here, because in the Truman Show, a very similar pin is associated to Sylvia, who is an actress that plays the role of Lauren in the show. In the story, Sylvia is the only real connection that Truman has. The others fake their feelings, but Sylvia really loves him, which is also why she gets fired from the show. In the movie, Sylvia's pin reads the phrase, how is it going to end, which is a hint for Truman to discover the truth. This question was also referenced in Vernon's narration of the teaser, but in the MV it's Joshua the one finding the pin, and him representing that point of the story. You see, that pin is very symbolical, because in the movie that question foreshadows that it's up to Truman to decide the ending of his own story. He can stay in the reality of the show or leave, but in order to leave he has to overcome his fear. Joshua's pin foreshadowed the same thing. It's up to them to decide the ending, 
but if they want to be free, they must overcome fear and fight for their life. This finally leads us to Jungan, who was the first one who was able to escape. In the video, we see him at the beach waiting for the others, and in the distance, a storm is getting closer as the members run off to join him. In the Truman Show, the producers create the storm because they know it will keep Truman from leaving. In the movie, however, he gets to a point where his desire to leave is bigger than his fear of the ocean, so he overcomes his phobia and sells off towards freedom. In the same way, Jungan is unbothered by the storm because the moment the others join him, he knows that he can overcome any struggle. By the end, the video concludes with the members on a boat in the middle of the sea. They are still being watched by the camera, but their journey to reach true happiness never ends. They chose to fight for their life, they chose to live to find themselves, so even if they might never truly escape from the camera, they successfully overcame fear and chose life. To see where this journey will lead them, we'll have to wait and see. But in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please think about liking and subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you next time, bye bye!